Greetings from wherever you're viewing this video. Um, if you're hearing my voice, I can only mean that you've enrolled in an online history course at Collin College. My name is Dr. Ryan Pettengill, and I will be your professor for this semester. And what I hope to accomplish in this video is to familiarize you with the guidelines, expectations, and requirements for our course. I also want to show you a little, little way around Canvas, the learning management system that we'll be using for this semester. And lastly, and probably most importantly, I want to take you through the syllabus so that we can all be on the same page when it comes to what to expect. So to that end, if you haven't peeked at the syllabus so, uh, thus far, I want, to, uh, I want to point out where you can find that. It's got a lot of important information in it, and uh, that's what I want to get to right now. Um, if you need to put me on pause, go ahead and put me on pause. I want to show you where you can find a copy of this thing. Uh, I will frequently toggle back and forth between this lovely image of Campus at Dusk that we're, we're viewing right now and Canvas. So let's do that. Um, when you log into our system, uh, this is what you see. This is our home page, and it's got all kinds of really helpful links and, 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 and that variety. But right now, I want you to click on the syllabus button up here. Okay, click on the syllabus button. Um, this is a copy of our syllabus. It does not go anywhere throughout the course of the semester. And um, if, you, if you go down to the bottom of page one, you will see my contact information. In a class like this, that is not only exclusively online, but it also is very accelerated, uh, communication is really, really important. And the best way to get a hold of me is uh, by emailing that address that you're looking at right there. Okay. I check that email address very, very frequently, and a uh, good chance that if you get me that message uh, Monday through Thursday before 3 o'clock, I'll respond on the same day. I'll be honest, it'll be a little bit slower on the weekends or in the evenings, but uh, I, I really do make every effort to respond to your questions and concerns in a timely fashion. Okay, so that's how you get a hold of me. There are also other ways, including uh, if you wanted to arrange a meeting with me on, uh, on, on, on campus, my office is located in Founders, uh, that would be F243. Um, you're looking at my office hours right there. If those don't work for you, let me know what does, and I'll, I'll certainly do my best to accommodate your schedule. Um, but right now what I want to do, guys, is, is talk to you a little bit about um, what, what, what this class is. Uh, History 1301 is the survey of what most of us would call early American history. It begins in a very, shall we say, vague time period. I, I like to think of this time period as uh, the era in American history before Europeans started showing up in the Western Hemisphere. So that world that existed before 1492, all right? Um, and we're going to take this all the way through 1877. That's a very precise date. And you'll understand why 1877 is such an important year uh, toward the end of our course uh, this semester. But in this time, we're going to be talking about a lot of different subjects, themes, issues, ideas, people, okay? And we'll talk about all of the usual suspects. I'll talk to you about Christopher Columbus and George Washington. We'll talk about the Declaration of Independence, Abraham Lincoln and the Emancipation Proclamation, the Civil War. Um, but we're also going to be talking about both people and things that don't always get their, their find their way into a history textbook. Um, I was trained as a labor historian. So if you're wondering why you're getting hit over the head with this slavery thing and indentured servitude thing and the rise of industrialization, that's primarily why. Um, it also means that I'm a social historian, and the people that I really care about when it comes to writing history uh, are the people at what we call the grassroots level of history. Uh, people like workers, people like slaves, uh, people like Frederick Douglass. Uh, a runaway slave from Maryland that would go on to become arguably the most important member of the movement dedicated to ending slavery in the United States. People like Anne Hutchinson, who was conducting what you and I would call uh, Bible study in, uh, uh, in 18th century New England. And when the person running the New England colonies 
really got in her face when it comes to you're a lady and you should not be doing what you're doing. Uh, she really pushed back and said all souls are created equal. And that ought to sound pretty familiar to you as an American in the sense that we've got this concept of equality, all men created equal. There's a lot of people that introduce very important core concepts to American democracy, and a lot of times they are not the Washingtons, Lincolns, later on in the 20th century, Kennedys, Roosevelts, you get the idea. And so those are the things that we were going to be underscoring here in this semester. I also want to share with you what I want you to get out of this class, okay? Um, on the one hand, I want you to feel like you are a much more informed citizen uh, after you complete this class. Um, <sighs> history is a really important subject when it comes to American citizenship. It's important to understand how you got to this moment in, in our nation's history. You can't do that unless you have at least a very, you know, uh, skeletal understanding of the past. And in an era where many, many, many people are really beginning to see history as very, very relative, um, this is an important part of what it means to be an informed citizen. Um, the other thing that I want to underscore here, and this is what I call more of an academic goal than anything else, I want to make you a better student, okay? Um, on the first day of class for the classes that I meet with for lecture, face-to-face uh, -face classes, I always ask people how many of you would take this class if uh, it were an elective, and almost no one raises their hands. But the fact of the matter is, uh, classes like history, um, they do develop skills, academic skills, that will make you into a better student, and, and I hope these skills are going to translate when you get to a four-year university and you begin to complete your degree. But even aside from all of that, what we're going to be doing in here um, over the course of the next few weeks is developing skills that, that employers want as well. A couple examples, critical thinking. Um, I don't know about you, but my superior has never come to me and said, listen, I want you to memorize this garbage and I want you to regurgitate it to me three weeks from now. Um, they don't ask me that. Uh, generally speaking, what they ask me is, what do you think? And more importantly, why do you think what you think? That's essentially what I'm going to be asking you on our exams. That's what I'm going to be asking you in these discussion forums. I don't really care that you can memorize what I have to say in one lecture or another. I want to know what you think, and most importantly, why you think it. That's a valuable, uh, employable skill that people in the, in the real world and the job market are looking for. Um, secondly, writing. I hope that when you complete this class, you feel like you are a much more competent writer. Uh, you've seen it. You've done it before. You're much more confident. You're much more at ease in your writing. And I don't care if you're going into nursing, criminal justice, whether you want to be a teacher, whether you want to be a, an attorney, whether you want to be a physician, right? The point in time will come to you where your superior comes and says, I need a report on one subject or another, and it can't be in all of this technical mumbo jumbo. You, you, you need to write it in layman's terms, and you need to write it in a way that's concise. You can't drone on for 45 pages. I need it to be in three pages or less. These are all skills that we will be developing, that you will be practicing over the course of the semester, and I'm hopeful that that's what you get out of this course, all right? Um, for right now, guys, I want to talk a little bit about the book that you need. Uh, that would be listed in the syllabus, but just for the good of the order, since we're right here, that's uh, Give Me Liberty by a guy named Eric Foner. Uh, you can get a copy of this at the bookstore. Um, you, you, are no, you are under no obligation to buy it from Collins Bookstore. If you can find it cheaper somewhere else, hey, go for it. Um, the book is really important because in a class like this, um, I don't get to meet with you and you don't get to ask me questions at a face-to-face -face level, so in that way the book really fills in that void. And so I highly recommend getting that book sooner rather than later. The next thing that uh, I want to talk about when it comes to just approaches to the class that might fall into what you and I would call best practices would be um, the video lectures. Let me take you back to uh, Canvas for a second, and I want to go back up here to uh, to to home, 
and um, actually I probably could have just clicked on modules because that's where I was going to take you now. Click on the modules link of Canvas here and uh, what you are going to find are um, first of all some some very handy bits of information here which I would encourage you to go through uh, as the course unfolds but for right now video lectures click it. If you click on that it's going to bring you to a page click on the page and what you are going to see uh, is a list of every video lecture that I will give over the course of the next few weeks. All these really are links to YouTube. Um, I have uh, not only lectured here but I've embedded the PowerPoint that I would have given had this class been an actual on-campus meeting lecture. Okay, and so this will go through with the uh, the PowerPoint to give you a better understanding of any given subject and topic in our class. One thing that I do want to emphasize here are these terms, right? These are the major components of my lecture. They're what I need you to be familiar with by the time that that lecture ends. And most importantly of all, these are the building blocks of my exams, okay? If you understand uh, what each of those terms are, what it is and how it fits in the context of our class, you're going to be okay on the midterm exam, exam and on the final exam. I don't need you to have a dissertation quality uh, understanding, uh, let alone notebook of any one of those terms. I just need you to know in the most basic of levels what it is and, and, and why it's relevant, why, why any of us studying this, this, this course should, should care about it, okay? Um, the video lectures are essentially doing the work. Um, that's what you would be doing if you were coming to campus and my expectation is that you're viewing these on a regular everyday basis okay um, so there is that uh, what you want to be asking yourself certainly what I'd be asking myself at this point would be how do I get the best grade in this class that that's what you should be asking yourself and more importantly how do I end this class with an A right you, you need to aim high you're all capable of this I believe that uh, anybody can learn anything if they if they really dedicate themselves to it and that certainly applies to our class and so probably the best and easiest way that you can ultimately not only complete this class but with a very high grade is by tuning in and uh, completing the discussion forums over the course of the semester. So the discussion forums, click on the, 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 the link right here, discussions, that I'm mousing over. And uh, what you are going to find when the page loads would be a list of discussions. Um, it goes out of order, uh, uh, sorry about that, but in any case, uh, what you need to do uh, based on the course calendar in the syllabus is to keep up with these things, right? And so right now, let's click on Discussion Forum 1. What uh, you are going to see here is um, a topic, uh, if you were to click on Discussion Forum 1, and um, it's going to ask you a very open-ended question. And then what you're going to do is use whatever reading material that uh, I've referenced to, to, to answer that question, okay? Now, nine times out of ten, uh, as long as you do what I ask you to do, you're, you're not going to have a problem racking up a lot of points in this realm of the class. 15 percentage points of your cumulative grade, pardon me, 20 percentage points of your cumulative grade is going to be based on completing these five discussion forums. Um, I'm not going to go through them with a fine tooth comb, generally speaking, as long as you put good solid effort into it and you read the uh, material that I ask you to read, that is going to be good enough for, for the credit. Let me take you back to modules for a second to make sure that you understand where to go when it comes to some of these course readings. Right? Click on the course resources button. You will see this button here that says online readings. And frequently, not always, but frequently, what these um, what these discussion forums will ask you is to read through discussion forum, or excuse me, re read through online readings three, for example. Download the PDF and and use that PDF to answer the open-ended question in whatever forum that we're talking about. Okay, and so that's how you complete the discussion forums. This is probably the most accessible. I hesitate to use the word easy, but easiest part of the class. The next very accessible part of the class is going to come in the quizzes. Over the course of the semester, you will see um, 
um, six quizzes, you're only responsible for five of them. Okay. Now, if you do all six and you do them well, you, you can earn up to three percentage points of extra credit. Each of these quizzes are, are worth um, three points, three percentage points. So officially, 15 percentage points is what they're worth. But if you do all six, you can, you can earn 18. Okay. Most of the time, the quizzes are going to accompany or be accompanied by a primary document, so something written by an eyewitness account. And the quiz will ask you to use that primary document to answer whatever it has to offer in the quiz. And once again, um, just by putting forward a good solid effort, you're going to get most of the credit for these assignments. All right? um, the questions are pretty straightforward and it's pretty plain what I want you to get out of the readings. And uh, as long as you take those questions serious, you'll be all right in that part of the class. So you've got your discussion forums, you've got your quizzes. The last two elements of the class would be uh, the final exam and the midterm exam. Uh, both of these exams consist of a combination of multiple choice, uh, short answer essay questions, and uh, one long answer question. And they're due at various points in the semester, uh, but there are some resources that are available to you if you want to begin preparing sooner rather than later. Uh, I can show you what I mean right here in the course resources button. I'm not going to download these things, but you can see a midterm review guide and a final exam review guide. What these will do is get your brain moving in the proper direction when it comes to preparing for the, uh, the exam. But each exam is worth 25 percentage points, and that is it. That, that, that is the class in a nutshell. It's based on a 100-point scale. If you refer back to the syllabus for a second, you can see that, uh, that, that that's my grading scale. I don't grade on the curve. Um, I, what I do is I take a common sense into consideration when it comes to um, calculating your total grade. If I've got somebody that is at a, uh, a 91.5792894, of course, I, I round up to uh, a 92, and that translates into an A, right? I just don't want you to think that close enough is good enough. If you end the class with an 82, please don't expect me to bump that to an A simply because you were a good student, okay? Um, but that really is uh, what I wanted to go through with you as far as how you complete this course. Um, I'm hopeful that this lecture has been helpful. If you have any questions, you should know at this point how you get a hold of me. I'm looking forward to a very successful semester with each and every one of you. And I really do hope that this course is a, is a, is a good experience. Um, I hope that it's a, it's a help, it's a, it's a shot in the arm, if you will, for your overall GPA. With that said, let's hit the ground running. Let's, let, let, let's have a great semester. I'll see you later.